The floater model that we're gonna show you today is a, a, um, a open source model. The model is already imported into our local computer and we, we, are, we are going to open it. The model is incomplete, so we're gonna add a, and connect a component. Um, uh, as we, uh, we just need to click on the uh, component that we wanna connect to the rest of the model and, uh, and that's it basically. We're gonna use a, a clip plane to show the interior uh, of the model. Uh, we use shell and beam element types to model the stiffeners uh, for this model. Uh, the, the ballast and the tower loads are modeled with RBE uh, spider elements to transfer the load, uh, the, the, the applied point loads. Um, next, uh, we're gonna uh, show the uh, the different sub subdomains. Uh, what you can see uh, on the screen is each uh, color represents a different subdomain. Each subdomain can have a different material properties or thickness values. Um, uh, yes, and next, next we're gonna show the the mesh. Uh, this is a, uh, the mesh uh, are refined at the hotspots complying with the DMV RP203. And uh, the next uh, is going to be to set up the, the simulation itself. So we, we run OrcaFlex and or OpenFast uh, uh, simulations before, and they uh, read the results from there. So that OrcaFlex simulation uh, had 4,000 uh, time steps. And uh, in this case, we're gonna uh, sh uh, s uh, plot 40 results. Uh, in the right hand side, you can see a graph showing the the uh, the time in function of the steps. And next, we're gonna go through on the the loads, the different load types that Roma explained: the self weight, ballast load, mooring loads, uh, diffraction and radiation loads, uh, hydrostatic loads, tower base loads, and the accelerations and the tower mass. Yeah, these are the uh, accelerations. Yeah. After this, we're gonna uh, move to our uh, dashboard to show how we can run the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the applets. So the Axelos da dashboard has multiple functionalities. One of them is to run custom-made scripts. Uh, on the Axelos cloud, these scripts are called applets. Applets were developed to automatize mapping of the low cell structural model in the Axelos environment. And uh, we can read OrcaFlex or OpenFest data to the collection. And the uh, OpenFest simulation even can be run directly on, on the cloud. Um, the, the MPZ files are generated and saved for uh, different load cases to the appropriate folder in the Axelos cloud. And an applet was developed to interpolate the hydrodynamic uh, database from from it to Axelos. Um, uh, this action is uh, needed to be done only once, not by the uh, every load case. And uh, now we're gonna uh, see the results how uh, uh, the interpolated database looks like from from Vomit in our environment. And you can see the different uh, diffraction and radiation pressures for each and uh, every wave period. So we, we show a couple of examples uh, for that. How uh, does it look like? And then we're gonna uh, show how the diffraction and radiation loads mapped uh, in, in time domain uh, to the entire floater. Uh, at each time steps. So basically the diffraction and radiation loads are converted to time domain. Um, and we're gonna show the radiation and the diffraction loads uh, in a second. Uh, yes, yeah, each and every uh, time step you can see uh, these uh, values. And you can even see how the wave passing through the floater the next thing we're gonna show is uh, how we do uh, the component training. Uh, this is also done on the Axelos dashboard. Uh, we need to set up a couple, couple of things such as the number of enrichment or number of cores 
used for the training. And once the component training is done, we can we can start running RBFEA solves. So uh, in the, in this demo case, we will run four uh, time steps. Uh, and you can see the different uh, options for the uh, the solver uh, that we have. And we move to the solution tabs and uh, run, click on uh, solve and uh, the solve is initiated on the cloud. And on the right hand side, uh, you can see that uh, we already have a result. It took about uh, 0 0.01 uh, second for one time step. And because we run a parallel four time steps, it took only a fraction of a second to compute these results. What you can see on the screen is the X displacement, and we're going to show um, the uh, uh, von Mises dress distribution for uh, the floater. The the next thing uh, we will show is to to how to change a uh, uh, 1D beam stiffener uh, thickness and the shape of the, of the uh, of the stiffener itself. So we're gonna go uh, to the model uh, tab again, and we'll uh, show visualize first the the 1D beam. Uh, because as you can see, those lines are the the 1D beam elements, and we're going to visualize the the stiffeners. Yes, as you can see, uh, we can see it on on the screen the the the, the different stiffeners, and we're going to select uh, these stiffeners in this region and uh, change the uh, the geometry of the of the stiffener. Uh, we already. Uh, we have these preset, these uh, stiffeners. These are custom, uh, customizable, of course. And then we we change the offset of the the stiffeners, and we're gonna run a solve uh, for this case as well. If we do any change on the, on the model, we have to <clears throat> push it to the to the cloud first, and then we can run uh, a solve. The same loads are applied for this model as well. We just only change the, the geometry of the stiffener. And the results are already here. So in this time, it took 0 0.008 seconds to run uh, the solve. And uh, we're going to compare the results uh, the two different with the two different uh, stiffener. You can see the uh, for me the stress distribution is how it's changing. Next uh, thing, what we will show is how to run the fatigue assessment on the model. <clears throat> so first we uh, we defined. Um, some uh, the hotspots, and we'll show uh, where are they by selecting the component itself. And as you can see, these around the hotspots, the the mesh is refined uh, as required by the standard. Each and every hotspot for each and every hotspot, you can define an SM curve uh, that is needed for the fatigue uh, calculation. Now the fatigue calculation itself uh, takes a bit of time, so we pre-run the, the calculations itself, and we will open the the result uh, file. And this is the this is how the result uh, look, looks like. In this case, we had uh, ten uh, time steps to to calculate the fatigue, and uh, we are uh, setting a ma maximum value for the result, so we can see exactly which uh, hotspots are critical. When you click on the, the result, uh, the hotspot, you can see the stress, uh, how the stress varies in function of the time. And of course, you can uh, plot and, and take out these results 
uh, and export it to uh, Excel, for example. All right, the next demo model that we're gonna show is the deep sea wind uh, demo uh, model. And we are going to show how to uh, change the thickness of, of a shell uh, uh, stiffener and how to swap uh, out a component uh, with a different uh, stiffener geometry. So first uh, we're gonna show the thickness of the, of the stiffener. So we'll see how we change uh, as we change the different uh, thicknesses, how it changes uh, on the screen. And we can select uh, these predefined uh, thickness values. We define these thickness uh, values during uh, the training or before the training. The, the, this is, so this is a parameter. Now the parameter uh, can be either an exact value or sets of values or a defined range. In this case, uh, we have four different uh, thickness values. Uh, we just simply changed uh, the, the thickness and we went to this uh, solution step and we hit uh, solve. While it's solving, uh, we'll go back to the, uh, to the model and we're gonna select a different uh, thickness. We go to the solution step and uh, hit solve again. And uh, the first, <clears throat> Uh, the first result is, is already completed and it took uh, 0 0.05 uh, seconds to run in this case. We already have the results and uh, using a clip plane again, we will show the von Mises stress distribution for that uh, particular uh, stiffener. And we can compare the results. So we, we have both of the, the results with a a smaller thickness and a, and a bigger thickness. We're gonna uh, use another clip plane uh, at the other solution to, to show the, the results there. So now we have both of the results uh, for that uh, particular stiffener and we can see how what's the effect of the thickness change. The next, what we're going to show is to uh, swap uh, out the component. So first, we're going to delete uh, that uh, the component that we want to uh, change or swap. Uh, and again, we can select uh, a component from our library that we run uh, previously, run training for. Uh, we connect it to the to the model. And uh, we the the we have to add the, uh, the that component to the loads. So once we add it uh, to that uh, that component to the loads, we can run another solve. Yeah, we're gonna use a clip plane again, and just to see the the difference. In this case, the the whole size is uh, smaller than. The, the previous uh, uh, cases. Again, the, the solution is already downloaded and uh, we're gonna uh, see, check the results for all the three uh, scenarios. So the first scenario is with the original uh, stiffener thickness. The second one is a, a bit uh, thicker uh, material and the last one is with a uh, with different whole size, different geometry. And lastly, what we wanted to show is our scripting capability. Uh, with the Axelos API, we can provide the possibility to, uh, to our customers to integrate our solutions to their workflow through uh, our API. Uh, API. Uh, in this example, uh, we are going to show how to run uh, multiple solves uh, to, with using a script. Uh, it's a very uh, simple uh, example, but uh, it will show what we can what we can do with the script. So in this case, we define uh, two uh, folders, one folder with the AKS or XLOS files, and the other folder is for the output files. When we run the script, it's gonna generate uh, two folders, and we can see how they it, it start uh, sending 
uh, the different components to the cloud and run uh, the simulation and then get back the result as an ESL uh, file. We can follow the, the process um, in our dashboard. Uh, this is also a functionality that we have. Where you can monitor uh, the workflow through our dashboard. I mean, the, the process through our, our dashboard. Yes, uh, with that, I, I will hand it over to Guillaume. 